our love. Here is our King, here is our love, here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. He is our King, He is our love, He is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. Look itself. A trace of what you're looking for. So be quiet now and wait. The ocean is growing. The tide is coming in. Here it is. Here is our king. Here is our love, here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. And He is our King, He is our love, He is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. 
They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even King Solomon in all of his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat or what are we going to drink or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, will, tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite all the kids up front for the children's message. What I brought today barely fits in my bag. Come find out what it is. All right. Well, last week, I was driving north on Highway 65, coming home from Fridley, and I saw a billboard for the town of Ely. Have you seen this one? It's pretty good. It says, this weekend in Ely, Emails are being ignored, and the world is not ending. Isn't that fantastic? I love this. Okay. But I figure when the tourism department of Ely comes up with a billboard like that, it probably says something about us and how we live, right? We think that if we unplug for e from email for a couple days, disaster will strike. We'll come back from a weekend up north and everything at work and in our extended families and among our friends will have imploded. But guess what? It won't. You can unplug and the world won't end. Okay? A lot of the stress that we feel, we kind of put on ourselves. I mean, don't beat yourself up about it. It's part of human nature. But I think if we realize that we create some of our own stress, it gives us permission to change how we live, to make changes so we can let go of stress. Okay. Today is the first week in our three-week series called Chill Out. We figured July is the hottest month, good month to chill out. We're going to spend three weeks talking about ways to let go of stress and find some calm in the midst of life. And today we're saying, let it go. If you need to sing the song from Frozen in your car on the way home, go ahead, knock yourself out. But let go of the stress and the worry. Okay. And the place to start with that, of course, is the very first chapter in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis 1. God creates the heavens and the earth. God sees that it's very good. And then God rests. Okay. We know this but we forget, okay? God unplugs from creating. God takes a break knowing that the world won't end, okay? The people up in Ely are banking on the fact that we're not quite as smart as God and we need a reminder every once in a while that the world won't end if we take a break, okay? And they're right. You know, we see that billboard and we know it's true. We recognize the truth. We realize that we have duped ourselves into working like dogs, which I know is a goofy analogy because dogs sleep all the time, but we're running through life without a break, okay? We do this to ourselves. There's a traditional Jewish tale that Rabbi Levi saw a man running in the street and asked him, why do you run? The man said, well, I'm running after my good fortune. And Rabbi Levi tells him, Silly man, your good fortune has been trying to catch you, but you are running too fast. Okay? We all do this, right? It looks different for each of us, but we all do it. We run without a break. Last month, we had baseball season and soccer season both at our house. And because May was so rainy, so everything is green and beautiful, that meant a lot of baseball rainouts and rescheduling. So we had one week in June where we had baseball five nights in a row, plus two nights of soccer on top of it. I prayed for rain. <laughs> I needed just one night 
of no sports so I wouldn't lose my mind. And thank goodness it did rain one of those nights, which was like, oh, good. Huh. Okay. But we've all been there, right? You know, we do this to ourselves. We're busy, we're stressed, and we need a Sabbath. Whether it's a whole day or part of a day or just 15 minutes of downtime, we need a Sabbath. God rested on the Sabbath and commands us to do the same. It is not selfish to rest. Okay? It is not selfish to rest. Our bodies and souls need Sabbath time. We feel it. We know it. And God gives us permission to take that time. Now, a lot of the things I'm going to talk about today come from the book Sabbath by Wayne Muller. I keep coming to this book year after year because it's so full of wisdom and practical suggestions about how to find rest in the middle of a busy life. So I'm going to share four things from this book that can help you let go of stress. Okay? The first one is something called a Sabbath box. Okay? Wayne Muller has Jewish friends who keep the Sabbath each Friday night, and they told him about this practice. They have a Sabbath box. And as each person enters the house for the Friday evening Sabbath meal, they put into the Sabbath box anything that they won't be needing during the Sabbath. Their cell phone, their car keys, anything that has to do with work goes in the Sabbath box. Okay. Now, he says for us, we can do the same thing. We can set aside a whole day like the Jewish people do, or maybe it's an evening or whatever block of time you choose. But create a Sabbath box and put in it anything that causes you stress. Your, car, your, your phone, your keys, your laptop or tablet, anything that doesn't belong in a time of sacred rest. Okay, you choose what that looks like. You can also put in that box all the things that are undone. For the list makers like me, this is the really super helpful part, okay? You can take a little piece of paper, and on each little piece of paper, write down one of those things that you're worrying about finishing, okay? Any concerns, any issues you're struggling with, any worry or concern, you write it down on a piece of paper, and you put it in the box. Then, he says, light a candle. Alone or with friends or family, Light a candle, and as the candle burns, allow the cares in the box to melt away, if for just a little while. Okay. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today's trouble is enough for today. Whatever remains to be done, says Muller, for now, let it be. Let it go. It will not get done tonight. In Sabbath time, he says, we take our hand off the plow and allow God and the earth to care for what is needed. Okay. Let it be. And at the end of your Sabbath time, as you open up the box, be aware of how you open up that box and how you respond to what you receive back into your life. Isn't that a fantastic idea? Okay. Use a candle to help imagine your cares melting away. Okay. Another way to use the Sabbath box is if you have like a family game night or a certain night of the week where you come together with family or friends, you could use this Sabbath box idea to mark the importance of setting aside everything else to spend time together. Okay. So the Sabbath box, that's number one. One of the other things Muller suggests is play. Play. When you take time to play with other people, you're able to set your worries aside. Okay. This past Friday, I still had to work on this sermon, the children's message, and the prayers. Stress, right? But my husband suggested that we take the kids to the science museum. Now, don't tell him this, but he was right. I should go write this on the calendar. I said he was right, okay? He was right. We needed time to play together as a family, 
to have some interaction more than, have you brushed your teeth yet? Are you ready for bed? Are your pajamas on? We needed to play together. So we went to the Science Museum on Friday. And had a great time. It was fantastic. And taking time away from my worries and my stress and my list gave me a sermon illustration. That's kind of nice. But it also gave me a good time with my family, memories that all of us will have, and, and it gave God a chance to break through my own thinking about the sermon with God's ideas of what I should say. See, God, God always talks and works in those relaxed brain moments. So play. That's number two. The third thing Muller suggests is take a walk. It sounds so simple, but it works. Take a walk with no purpose other than to be out in the world. Okay? We've got a beautiful garden here at church. We've got a labyrinth and a fountain out there. It's a perfect place to walk. And as you walk, if you notice a bird or a plant or a bug, stop and check it out. There's no rush. Give yourself permission to walk with no purpose. What that does is it connects you to the rest of creation. It grounds you in the beauty of God's world. It gives you something to think about other than your stress and your worries. Muller tells a story about a South American tribe that went on a long march. Day after day, they would march. Then all of a sudden, they would stop walking, sit down to rest for a while, and set up camp for a few days. They explained that they needed the time to rest so that their souls could catch up with them. Isn't that an interesting image? They needed to rest so their souls could catch up with them. Sometimes it feels like we live so fast that we need to stop every once in a while to let our souls catch up. Taking a walk with no purpose gives your soul a chance to catch up. 30 minutes or less, and you're ready to go again. The fourth thing Muller suggests won't surprise you. It's prayer. He says, prayer is like a portable Sabbath. I love that. It's a portable Sabbath. So whenever it strikes you, stop in the middle of whatever you're doing, take a couple of deep breaths, and pray. You can pray the Lord's Prayer, part of a psalm, uh, part of a poem, whatever you're moved to pray. Maybe something like, thank you, God, for this beautiful day. May all things be at peace. And then just kind of let the peace of that prayer spread out across your day like ripples on a pond. Yeah. So simple. Pray. So those are four ways to deal with stress. For the list makers among us, I will recap them at the end. I will warn you when, okay? <laughs> I know you're out there. I'm here to help. All right. So our Bible readings today talk about how to deal with worry particular kind of stress. And one of the things Philippians says is pray. It says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Right? With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Now, as a mom, I've learned that I can't tell people what to feel. It just doesn't work, okay? If one of my kids is worried about something, I can't tell them, oh, that's no big deal. That's nothing to worry about. To them, it is a big deal. They're already worrying about it. They need to know what to do with their worry, okay? And I talked about with the kids about this at the kids' message, but this works for all of us, okay? Have that shelf in your head. Have that shelf in your head of clear plastic boxes, okay? Whenever you've got a worry you need to let go of, take down one of the boxes, open up the lid, put your worry inside, close it up, and slide it right back up on that box, on that shelf, okay? It's clear. You know it's there whenever you need to worry about it. You can see it. So imagine putting that shelf on the box, 
And then imagine taking a step back. Once you've put that worry on the shelf, imagine taking a step back and seeing the creator of the universe holding up that shelf for you. Holding those worries for you. They're in God's hands. They're taken care of, so you can just leave them there. Okay? You can let it go. When you need to worry, the boxes will be there. And we all know that worrying all the time about everything isn't good for us. All it'll do is give you ulcers. Okay? But if you need to worry, give, yourselves, give yourself 15 minutes a day of worry time. A certain time a day where that's when you're going to worry. And the rest of the day, as worries pop into your mind, put them in a box. Okay? Put them on a box for God to hold on to. Take them out for that 15 minutes of worry time a day if you need to, and then give them back to God. In the Gospels, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. Today's trouble is enough for today. Okay? So tomorrow's trouble goes in one of those boxes. We take it to the Lord in prayer, and we let it go. We let it go because we know God's never going to let go. Okay? God's got us, so we can let go of it. And if it helps to do that with somebody else, do it. Get a friend or a neighbor or me or Glendy and pray together. Pour out your worries and stress and give them to God. And an amazing thing will happen. Okay? If you're the note taker, here's your list. When we use a Sabbath box, when we play, when we take a Sabbath walk, when we pray, when we put our worries in a box on a shelf held up by the creator of the universe, we find that we are able to let it go. We let go of our stress and our worry, and we discover the life that's happening right in front of us. We let it go, and we find the present. And maybe you've heard that saying that the present is called the present because it's a gift, right? So let it go and open the gift of the present. Amen. valley of the shadow of death your perfect love is casting out fear and even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back I know you are near and I will fear no is coming for the heart that holds on a glorious light beyond all compare and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes we'll live to know you here on the earth and i will fear no evil for my god is
let go, Lord, you never let go of me. I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, Still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes. And through the storm, oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me.